is QFS Transportation High School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet on My TV Charleston. A rivalry between a Mount Pleasant High School and a James Island High School is, is nothing new. Wando James Island goes way back. The Bengals are in town now, two years into this school's existence. They're trying to create a new Mount Pleasant James Island rivalry. Second matchup in three days between the Beckham Bengals and the Trojans of James Island. Glad you're with us for QFS Transportation. High school hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Darren Goldwater, Natalie Spala. They just played Wednesday night. James Island won it by four. One day in between. Now we'll see what the rivalry's made of. And what more could you ask for? A lot of these guys, they, they have known about each other just because we are so close in proximity to each other out in Mount Pleasant here on James Island. But a budding rivalry nonetheless, and it's going to be an exciting one tonight. Coaches, players, they'll all tell you, if you're going to make it a rivalry, well, part of that is, is winning some games. Thomas Oppold has been a part of this program since its inception just a year ago, and he was called the pioneer of the program by his head coach, Glover. And he is essentially that, both on the floor and off the floor. This is a guy top five in his class, a 5.0 GPA, not to mention just what is he producing on the floor. He's their shooter. He's their guy. He's also one of their captains, so look for him to, to make a name for himself tonight. A couple of sophomores will start for James Island, including their leading scorer, Braxton Scott. Brady Shuck, their head coach, told me he's got an unteachable feel for the game. What does he bring to this Trojans team? He brings pretty much everything. He's their leading scorer. He's their point guard, the guy who is pushing the pace of this game. Another guy with, again, untouchable or unteachable, rather, feel for the game, but great instincts. And again, that's something you can't coach. So when you see a player with that, what more could you ask for? James Island is 7-1 and one in the region. Hopes of winning the region. Got to keep it going through the final four games of the regular season. QFS Transportation High School Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Could you hear the two of us the same or were you lower? Fifty-one forty-seven. that was the score Wednesday night in Mount Pleasant. It was a strange game. The first quarter and the fourth quarter were both dominated by James Island. The middle two quarters were controlled a little bit there by Lucy Beckham. Brady Shuck, his first year as the head coach, he played at Furman. And we'll pause for the national anthem.
some of the sights and sounds here inside of the Trojans gym. Brady Shuck called it home as a high school student. Then he went out, eventually continued his career at Furman as a player, has then come back here, has been an assistant for a couple of years, now in his first year leading this program, and he's got him at 14-7, and seven, winners of eight of their last nine games and 7-1 and one in the region. If they can win these next three games, potentially setting up a winner-take-all game with Buford to take home Region 7 for a... Andrew Glover has been directing the Beckham program since its inception, all of, what, two years ago. It's the second year of the program. They don't have a senior on their roster yet, and he told me if you would have told him back in October that this team would be sitting at 14 and 6 come February, he would have said, thank you very much. I appreciate your confidence, and let's see how it all plays out. But that's how this team has gelled together. He's got a group. Uh, largely, who had some playing time last year, a bunch of sophomores went through the fires of a one-win season that Glover said was one of the toughest of his career. Never experienced the downs of a 1-11 season like that, but boy, has his team responded. And here is their starting lineup, brought to you by Roper St. Francis Hospital, where experience matters. Thomas Oppold, keep an eye on that. He normally wears number five. He's got 21 on tonight. The three-point sharpshooters are Oppold, Bales, and Ireland. James Island starters, the two Scots, Braxton and Amantre, two sophomores in there. You also have Curie Ankrum, who is a senior, Cam Smith and John Grant, both seniors. The goal for James Island tonight, again, after seeing Lucy Beckham two days ago, Brady Shuck said, I want our size to disrupt their offense. What James Island has is size. They have some depth. Lucy Beckham runs a very detail-oriented, very well-coached half-court offensive set. James Island is hoping, Natalie, that their size can maybe disrupt the comfort level of the Bengals. And that's really what's so interesting about this matchup is that these are so different teams when it comes to really that tradition and history, of course, on the James Island side. we got a new the new kids on the block, essentially, with the Bengals. But really, their schemes and their systems are complete opposites as well. So hopefully the winner of this one, you imagine, will be the guys that can stick with their game plan, stick with what they know works, because I think it's going to come another game that's going to come down to execution. Just like last night, if you were with us for QFS Transportation High School Hoops, the head coaches were very good friends. These two head coaches are also good friends. They played against each other at Wando and James Island. They've coached with and against each other at the AAU ranks. They're just about the same age. But I won't say they go back as far as Pearson and Saunders because they're about half the age of Pearson and Saunders as Beckham wins the tip. They're in the blue, trimmed in green are the Bengals. And the white trimmed with blue, the James Island Trojans. And I think that also plays into why these two coaches want to see this budding rivalry between these two schools because they have a rivalry that really stretches back to their high school days. So hey, why not keep it going? A lower scoring game. A half-court style of game will favor Beckham here as the freshman who starts, Harper Stevens, one of the few freshmen that will see the court tonight, maybe the only freshman that will see the court tonight. He's operating at the high post. Beckham saves that, Noah Bales does. Very deliberate. Offensive sets run by Beckham. you got a five-second violation. The size, the pressure on the ball, that is what can affect this offense. And that's going to be huge for this, this Bengal team is really sticking with that half-court offense, running their sets, sticking with what they know, but they got to get and go also. Braxton Scott, the sophomore, the quarterback on the football team, the point guard on the basketball team. They kind of go hand-in-hand hand sometimes. Here's our Montre Scott. Winners of eight of nine. The only loss in there is to Buford, an 8 no team in the region. Nice dump down low. We got a foul. And it will put John Grant at the line. And look for them to really take advantage of getting inside the paint, getting deep down low. This isn't a team that has a bunch of sharpshooters like this Bengal team, on the other hand. So look for them to take advantage of getting things deep in the paint, finding their shots in there. You think John Grant has the size of a football player? He does. He has the size of a Division I football player. He'll be heading to Coastal Carolina as a tight end. I believe Coastal's starting tight end is down in Mobile right now in the Senior Bowl. 
That foul, by the way, uh, charged to no bails. The second leading scorer for the Bengals. A pair of free throws missed. Here's Braxton Scott now. And back-to-back -back turnover. So Beckham turns it over. James Island gets a couple of opportunities and eventually turns it over as well. Scoreless just over a minute in. And Bengals head coach Andrew Glover has said that they have dealt with some rebounding woes this season. It's been a point of emphasis, one of their keys to the game every time they, they do a pregame huddle. So that's going to be a huge factor in this one, I have a feeling. Ireland affected at the hoop. Looked like Cameron Smith kind of met him right around the rim. It'll be Beckham ball on the miscommunication as the ball finds the bench of Brady Shuck. Shuck has said this is an aggressive team, but sometimes a little bit too aggressive. I know they want to get the ball out and go, but you got to make sure your, your teammates there expecting the ball. Malin Aller here. A lot of juniors on this Beckham team. They don't have a senior. We just pointed that out. Here's Harper Stevens now, the freshman. He'll give them some size on the inside, and the 6'4 freshman opens our score. And that's a great move right there. And it really helped it out, that Oppel move to the corner, get that rotation on the inside, get the defenders moving, and then he made a great move to the basket. Aller comes back and steals the pass here. Quite a turnaround for this team as Ireland, one of three excellent three-point shooters. You can really extend that down to Tyson Smith coming off the bench. And here's this move. Gets his guy out, Oppel moving on the outside to the corner. Gets the defender to, to really kind of jump at least two feet out, so takes it hard to the basket as a result. Smart play from the freshman. Beckham extends to a three-quarter court zone. That one's rattled through by Braxton Scott. The team's leading scorer ties the game. James Island has a bunch of veterans. They have eight seniors on the team, but none of them had valuable minutes last year. So they might not be as veteran as maybe their class might indicate. How about that scoop with the right hand? That goes begging for bails, but he'll head to the line. And we're already getting a sense of the discipline of this Lucy Beckham team. Very good ball movement, very good. Everyone knows exactly where they need to be on the floor, what their role is. One guy cuts to the basket, you move on the perimeter. So great fundamental basketball so far from these Bengals. I love the story of Noah Bales. He was on the team last year, didn't play a whole lot. And he really wowed the whole coaching staff in practice. He was playing some pickup games. In the words of Glover, he was balling out, and they said, oh, who's, who's Bales? He, he didn't play as a freshman at Wando, and he's earned himself not only a spot on the team, he's starting. And my favorite part of that is they call him Knockdown Noah. I mean, what a better name than that. He's the only guy that's beaten head coach Andrew Glover in a shootout. There's a three. You want to talk shootout? That's Cameron Smith knocking down a three. I can get behind Knockdown Noah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think he's... He's putting up a fight with that one. The Gamecocks just brought in a running back, a transfer out of Columbia, who goes by the nickname, a self-described nickname of Lil Turbo. <laughs> All right, hey, why not? Another great inside-out action right here. Get the ball in the paint, move on the perimeter, make that defense collapse on that guy, then kick it out to a wide-open shooter. And again, this isn't a, a three-point shooting team, but if a defender's not on you, they, they do know when to pull the trigger. What do you like about this three-quarter court zone for Beckham? It looks like their arms are getting in a lot of passing lanes. I this is, yeah, I really do enjoy this. This is a team that, again, going back to their fundamentals, they can switch things up on defense. They can they can work a man, they can work a zone, but just very active. And that's that's the thing with zones is you, you want to have your hands up, you want to do the little things, especially on a team that's not a great three-point shooter because for an offense, you shoot yourself out of a zone. You, you make them guard you. Rebound moves all the way back out to the midcourt stripe. Underneath through contact, the finish is there. Cameron Smith's got five. And great patience right there. Bales came flying through looking for the block. Give him a second, and up it goes. Allard coast to coast. Rebound batted around. It'll stay with the Bengals. We're halfway through this opening quarter. A 7-3 lead. Great pass down low. 
And again, that patience. So many guys that just want to go up right away when they get that ball in their hand. It takes a great basketball IQ to, to wait a second, make that defender fly by you, and then go up strong. Five straight points now for Cam Smith. Really operates as a third point guard for this team. Allard does, in fact, save it. Right in front of us, Noah Bales. On the baseline, it's Oppold. And it's a tie-up here in the lane, so it goes over to James Island with 3.56 to play in the opening quarter. And it should be our media timeout. There it is. All they have to do is ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy. I'll give him a thumbs up and let him know it's time to hit the break. Hey, we'll always take a break over here. 7-3 Trojans at QFS Transportation High School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. My first year involved in high school hoops in the Low Country. I've been down here for 20 years. I'm impressed with the students that we've seen. <laughs> this is our fifth broadcast so far at QFS Transportation High School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. The students have been out in support and in force, I think, every time we've been out here. And they're supporting one of their own. Brady Shuck guided the Trojans when he was here to the lower state finals in 2015. While on the other bench, Glover was part of a Wando team that won a state championship. So these two guys, I'd say, go way back into the mid-2010s. Yes. <laughs> and and in the, even in this gym, I, I hear that it, the chant was the common chant when, when Brady Shuck was playing was Brady Nation. Mm. Brady Nation. I can hear it now, but I don't think they were talking about Tom Brady either. <laughs> I think they were talking about Brady Shuck out there. <laughs> I was going to say that, that would have worked well. <laughs> Lucy Beckham had the opening points in this first quarter. And after it was tied at two, we have five straight points from Cam Smith himself, which has Glover's team down by four, just over four minutes in. They've come in having lost two straight. They had won three straight prior to that. They opened the year five and one. And in and of itself, opening the year 5-1 and one on the heels of a 1-11 and 11 right. season, there's something to be said for that. Then to build off that to a 14-6 and six record through 20 games. A lot of positive vibes around the newly formed Beckham Bengals. And I know we, we kind of touched on it with Porter Goud last night, is that they just have a, so much promise in their, in their future as Braxton Scott knocks down the jumper. But years to come, you just... You look at these teams and you can see their growth that they've taken place in one season, but to see them in two seasons, three seasons down the road, it's gonna be something special. You're seeing the size of James Allen on these last few possessions affect Beckham when they're getting down low. That's a tough shot by Braxton Scott. But again, an unteachable feel for the game. This is their guy. He's gonna pull up when he's confident. He's got four. It's a seven nothing run for James Island. And again, their goal is the region championship. 
Lob underneath. Nell's putback isn't there. Didn't even draw iron. Here's Ireland taking it back the other way for the Bengals. Oppold sets shot. the feet and drills it. That's their guy, and that is his spot. He wants to find it on the perimeter. He'll, he'll attack if he needs to, but he gets comfortable out there on the perimeter. Oppold has almost 20 more made threes than he does made twos. <laughs> there are a couple of sharpshooters for this Bengals team. There's That's the aspect that could keep him in the game. Great drive, too. Again, this just goes back to that fundamental basketball I was talking about earlier. Get in the paint, draw those defenders in, make them collapse, kick it out to your guy who knows how to knock a shot down, and that's exactly what Oppel did. Jonah Max sees the seam, takes advantage of it. Off the bench, he's got a quick two. And we're starting to see this, this Bengal offense come alive. It's a team that plays seven, eight guys. They're not extremely deep, but... Glover will go to his bench and kind of find some new rotation if he needs to. But a step back there for Cam Smith. Cam Smith has seven of the 11. Little offensive flow here in the second segment of the game. We didn't see that in the opening four minutes. Beckham had a pregame meal right around 5 o'clock up in Mount Pleasant. They boarded the buses around 5.45, 5.50 to get down here to James Island. I can tell you from personal experience, the traffic was much lighter today than it was yesterday. <laughs> yes, it get was. Get over the bridge from Mount Pleasant down here. And the traveling violation gives it back over to Beckham. First touch for the freshman, DJ Wright. Ireland was considered just like Oppold, you know, one of the pioneers of this program. You can say that really about a lot of these guys, these juniors that Beckham has. Here is Ireland, fouled while taking a free throw line jumper. And this is another guy that just has a great feel for the game. He wants to get his shot up from the outside, from that perimeter. But just another uncanny feel for the game. He knows when to go left, when to go right, when to shoot, when to drive. And, and head coach Andrew Glover kind of touched on it. Some of these players just make the coaches look good just because <laughs> they they just have such a feel and such a high basketball IQ. And, and what more do you want from a coach when your players make you look good? You want a couple of free throws to be knocked down, and that one is for Ireland. His first points of the game on a Will Lou Gray Opportunity School free throw, a rich tradition of individualized learning. Off the screen, Cameron Smith free from the top. Smith is on fire. He's got 10 of the 14. Yeah, he is feeling himself. An early run at our player of the game. Long way to go. It's just a five-point lead. On the baseline, look who's open in the corner again. Oppold can't convert. Knocking it free. Back the other way come the Bengals and the rejection off the glass from Nell. Inside outside game back to the senior Smith who has it knocked off of his leg. Allard got a hand on it. Now here's Allard on the other end. An and one try for Malin Allard. And these two teams, they are battling with, with momentum. Which side wants to kind of take control? We haven't seen one side do it yet, but but here's Allard really making a play for his team when, when things are, are not necessarily going shifted one way for each team. Allard had a great game Wednesday night. He had 13 points in the loss, eight boards to go along with it. Speedily into the front court. C.J. Gibbs a little out of control, and he turns it over on the baseline. Both coaches felt that these two teams were pretty evenly matched. That first game should tell you that. Just a four-point win for James Island. We have a foul here, not a tie-up. And we got a timeout. So Beckham gets a timeout to secure the possession with 40 seconds left. I'm not sure if that was called on the floor or from the bench. 
But a couple different things could have happened there. If it was a foul, it probably would have been Beckham Ball. Certainly right. would have been Beckham Ball. If it was a tie-up, it also would have been Beckham Ball. But Glover isn't taking any chances. He'll take that timeout and draw something up down by three with 40 seconds to play. Because this wasn't where the foul was with, with Allard falling to the floor. I think they were hitting the guy that jumped on top. And you can see Ireland coming in there signaling for the timeout. It's not too often you see teams play back-to-back -back games against each other with one day in between. It's happening in the college ranks with a day or two in between. Very occasionally now, it's because of the COVID reschedules. Here's Allard dribbling it off his foot conveniently right to his teammate with the extra pass. We got Ireland who was fouled at the free throw line a possession ago. Now he's fouled, taking a three. And this is that aggression that head coach Brady Shuck talked about. His team is very aggressive. They love to compete, but sometimes they just push it a little too far. And right there, you can see it in Beckham's favor going to the free throw line. A Will Lou Gray Opportunity School free throw, a rich tradition of individualized learning. That one's knocked down for Ireland. He's got a pair. James Island led 9-3. That was the largest lead in this quarter. And now an opportunity for Ireland to tie it up with just about 20 seconds left in the opening quarter. A couple of new coaches here at James Island. Brady Shuck, obviously, in his first year. Jamar McCoy has the football program going in the right direction. A couple of playoff appearances. I've said many times, and I even said it to Brady Shuck today, if I had stock to buy in Jamar McCoy, I'd buy it right now. <laughs> and he said, you know what, it's a good friend of mine, and the two programs feed off each other. And you can really see that right here on the floor tonight. A lot of these guys are two-sport athletes on the football field during the fall and then bring it inside during the winter. Into the corner for DJ Wright. Off the heel. And a second try is off the side of the glass. So we're tied at 14. Five straight points for the Beckham Bengals to close that first quarter. And they are tied on the road at James Island, trying to build a newfound rivalry with the Trojans on QFS Transportation High School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Drop two straight, trying to turn that around are the Bengals. Both of the teams have three games remaining after this one, and all three of those games are scheduled to be next week. So it's kind of a sprint to the finish here in Region 7-4A. 
And really, the fact that James Island is now in 4A for a couple of years, they're staying in 4A, right. there's some consistency there that the Trojans really haven't had as a program, an athletic department, top to bottom. And that's all the more reason why they want this rivalry to really to grow, is because these guys are going to be seeing more of each other in the years to come. Pettis has whistled for the foul. D.J. Wright, the freshman, almost had the interception. And back it comes with Allard, who can't navigate that pass through the lane. And here come the Trojans. Braxton Scott looking at a three-on-three three and looking at the rim. He'll head to the free throw line. And we see Malachi Coakley on the floor for the first time tonight. He's their guy that really gets their defense moving. I know the last two, the last time these guys saw each other, he was a big factor. He started just two days ago. He's another guy that they look to go to. Neither team has gotten off to a very hot start from the line. Here's Braxton Scott with one more. Will Lou Gray free throw. Scott had four points in the opening quarter. You can expect big things for Scott on the floor and on the football field in the next couple of years as well. Throws that ball off the knee of Jonah Mack. So it'll be a kick ball that will stay with the Trojans. And the cool thing about Coakley is he scored the first ever touchdown for Lucy Beckham. It was a kick return. That's kind of cool. Just knowing I, I, I scored the first touchdown in my high school history. Uh, no doubt. <laughs> and there he is getting it on that play. Yep. Look for him to make make some moves on defense. Allard's long arms allowed him to at least get a clean shot off, but uh, now he wraps up the arms of DJ Wright. The foul will go on Allard. We saw these off both sides, their offense really come alive in the final minutes of the first quarter. So far, nothing. Not even a minute into this second quarter, though, but both teams kind of looking looking to find that basket, but struggling so far. You had a look at John Grant there for a minute, just back into the game. A couple of runs in that first quarter, seven straight points for James Island early in the quarter. Glover's group came back with five straight to close the first quarter and tie it at 14. And that's where we stand right now. Pretty balanced scoring effort for Lucy Beckham as that one rattles through for C.J. Gibbs, his first three. No one was really on it. That's not something you see typically from this Lucy Beckham team. They're pretty solid on defense as Oppel looks to answer. But there was no one on C.J. Gibbs. And hey, if no one's going to defend you, then why not? Steps right into his shot. He was ready to go. If one team would be considered more of a three-point shooting team, it would be Lucy Beckham. But James Island's out here knocking them down like it's what they do best. There's Ankrum, his first three points of the night. And I think that's the sweet spot on the floor. Back-to-back -back threes right on that wing. That time there was a defender on, but... we got a palming of the basketball here for Ireland. These little mini runs continuing. And I think they heard me when I said their offense was, was starting to slow down a little bit because back-to-back -back threes, six points coming out of the first end of the first quarter. Ten points for Cameron Smith, the leading scorer in the game. This is him. Senior with smooth handles, according to his coach. I jinxed him. Turns it over as Jonah Mack dives down to the floor and takes it away. Beckham gives it back. Ireland's turned it over on back-to-back -back possessions here. And again, I think these, this Bengal team is starting to get away from what they know best. They want to play their half-court offense, but the Trojans are kind of pushing them out of that. They want them to move fast as if they are doing it on the other side of the floor. Here's Gibbs now as that zone collapses on him at the free throw line. Beckham's zone worked against James Island in the first matchup. That's what slowed things down in the second and third quarter. But here they switch to it. They give up a couple of threes and a putback for John Grant. And rebound.
rebounding starting to sting for this Bengal team. Coakley was there, he had a body on him, but go up and get that ball. This is now an eight nothing run for James Island. So a seven nothing run and an eight nothing run in the opening half for the Trojans. Beckham yet to score here in the second period. Ireland lobs one inside through contact. The finish is there for Oppel. That's a tough pass by, by Rowan Ireland. But it found the hands of Oppel who puts it home. Here's Gibbs. He works into traffic, muscles that one up. And off the floor, it's won by Beckham's Malachi Coakley. Ireland, again, able to work his way inside. The Bengals have been able to find some penetration. That one comes with a little extra contact. Let's take a look. Strong move. Looks like he can, it's a great find, really, too. But just a little bit out of control. Timeout on the floor with four and a half to go. And it'll be a full timeout here for Beckham. One of the things that's clearly happening right now for Beckham, A, they're giving up a couple of long balls, B, on the inside. And that's something that both coaches talked about, right? You, you talked about how Glover pointed out he has had some ups and downs rebounding wise. And James Island has said, I think we can take advantage of our size. And we're seeing that kind of come to fruition here tonight. But uh, probably what we didn't expect to see from this James Island team is they're really shooting the three ball extremely well. This wasn't something that they did well two days ago. I don't have the official um, percentage from the three-point line, but they only made one or two three threes in that whole game. They were putting up a, probably 15, 20 threes. So they were not finding that basket at all. But today, maybe, hey, they're on their, their home court. Sometimes that, that's all you need. The other part about that first game, it was the second game in as many nights for both teams. Both coaches acknowledged that, you know, maybe the legs weren't there. Maybe as the game went along, that was one of the factors in it. A, the cold shooting night for both teams, and B, the fact that James Island was able to finish just a little bit stronger. They're the deeper team. If you're, you know, if you're both tired, if your legs are going, the tad bit of added depth that's going to carry you through. I'm glad both of these teams, they had they did have the day off yesterday to kind of regroup. They learned a lot about each other two nights ago. And of course, seeing each other tonight. Allard went for the steal, that opens up the lane. Here's Coakley aggressively on the inside for the Bengals. And he really is that spark for their defense that they need. They need to come away with some some boards on, on their side of the, of the court. And they need to limit James Island's possessions to just one shot. You can see the different defensive mindsets. James Island is trying to speed up Beckham. They're getting into their shorts for the man-to-man -man aggressive D. Beckham's gone three-quarter court with a zone. How about that for Coakley? We've seen him on the glass. We've seen him on the other end. Now he puts that in. That's a bucket that the Bengals desperately needed. They were getting really quiet on that side of the ball. And now they'll get a chance to, to make something after it, make something of it up after that turnover. It's a super athletic play right there. Coakley was a starter for the team last year, and he's considered the best defender on the team. And his insertion here, certainly his play in the last, what, two minutes, has helped stem the tide a little bit for Beckham and continue the theme of a game of runs. He had eight straight just a minute ago for James Island. It's four straight now for Lucy Beckham. Trying to add to that with just about three minutes to go in the opening half. Second matchup in three days as the floater's there from Ireland. And this is a guy who can really take the game over, put it in his hands. He's very good at distributing the ball to his teammates when they're open, but he also knows how to how to take it himself when they need him to. It's as high up as we've seen a Beckham Bangle get no bails for the rebound. They've tightened things up on the defensive end on the glass as well, but they'll turn it over here. And we have a timeout on the floor. 
six straight points for the Bengals after eight straight for the Trojans. We're running here on James Island on QFS Transportation High School Hoops. Trojans lead at 22-20. They've got 10 from Cameron Smith, but he hasn't scored this quarter. It's been a more balanced effort for Andrew Glover's group. He has one, two, three, four, five different guys who have scored no more than the five from Rowan Ireland, and Oppold, who also has five. So we can talk about the depth for James Island, but the scoring breakdown is more spread out for Lucy Beckham here. Almost through a half. And that's a, a big difference between these two teams. James Island is as deep as they come. Lucy Beckham, on the other hand, is really as balanced as they come. They have a lot of guys who can play different roles, fill in when a guy needs to get a break. But that's a, a big difference between these two teams who are, really don't have a lot of, in common. <laughs> their styles are very different. Their depth is different. This game has been physical. There have been some hard contact plays. And I think that's the seventh foul on James Island. It is, so we have a one and one coming here for Ireland. Again, we've talked about it a few times tonight, but Chuck said one of their, I guess, things to work on is really kind of settling down, playing their game, not getting overly aggressive. And you see it right there, and it's again sending Rhode Ireland to the free throw line as a result. Ireland sitting on five. He averages ten and a half. Four boards and four assists. Calm, cool, and collected. Already a difference from Wednesday's matchup to this one. The first and fourth quarter were owned by James Island in the first one. The second and third, Lucy Beckham kind of controlled. These two have been very similar been a game of runs really it hasn't been broken up by quarters it's been broken up by two three minute stretches right. so we are going the opposite way moving screen it looked like and this whole second quarter is runs eight straight first for james island now eight straight to answer for beckham if it sounds like we're harping on it that's the story of the game right 100 <laughs> percent We'll take it. Noah Bales. Penetration opens that up for Bales. Knock down Noah. I'm waiting to say it. You just did. But I, he needs <laughs> to give me a reason to say it. I just don't want to sprinkle it in there. I have a feeling he will. Timeout for Brady Shuck. Didn't like the approach against that three-quarter court zone with two minutes left in this half. And look at these Bengals to start applying that pressure. They are a very good, fundamental, solid defensive team. And they, they want to get these Trojans in a half-court set. They want to make them 
run something. They don't want to get them out in transition, and that's exactly what, what these Trojans want to do. They want to play hard. They want to play physical. They want to just pound the ball in deep. So force them to play in a half-court set, and really that could be the success for this Bengals team. Brady Shuck said the, the fundamentals, the values that he's preached to these guys, it goes back to his, his time at Furman when Nico Medved was initially his head coach. Medved now the head coach at a Colorado State. He said three values, fly around, share the ball, be a good teammate. That's the core values for this Trojan team. And it starts on the defensive end, and they're drilling threes. Wow. Seven now for Scott. I have it as the fourth three James Allen has hit tonight. And that silences that run by the Bengals. Little pick and roll, the freshman high off the glass. Stevens doesn't have the roll. Pettis gets the quick outlet. Euro step for Cam Smith, and he sneaks that over the rim. Yeah, that's just good defense, but better offense. Ireland said right in front, made him his offensive player make a move around him, and he did. Five point lead as we approach 60 seconds to play in the opening half and a foul on the Trojans will put Beckham back at the line. Twelve points now for Cam Smith. Yeah, great, just strong move to the basket. Again, that's that transition offense that, that these Trojans want to play. Cameron Smith getting it done right there. That one not there for Coakley. Minutes to go here in the opening half. Pettis has been a starter. James Island has rotated through their starting lineup pretty much all year. Cameron Smith making a case to say, you know what, I belong in the lineup to stay and I belong on the floor forever. And credit to Braxton Scott for that. That's their point guard. That's their, their floor general. And he really made that play go. Dribble penetration to the paint. Finds this guy open on the outside. Pettis down to the floor. But it's Braxton Scott who has the loose ball. Up by 8.30 seconds left in the half. Nice dish underneath to Grant. Great find right there. Hey, guess what we have? We have another run. Ten straight <laughs> points. This is the team that can soar quickly, though. Let's see if the Bengals take advantage with 10 seconds. Hard screen up top. Oppel buries the three. Oh, Cam Smith had a look at the horn, and it may have been partially deflected by Coakley, flying back in transition D. Entertaining first half. A first half of runs. We'll see if it continues through the second 16 minutes as well. James Allen trying to not only sweep the season series, but also gunning for their ninth win in their last 10 games. From the backyard, you're watching QFS Transportation High School Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet.
Talking to David Ayler, talking scholarships, talking smart students, and we've got plenty of them. We've already done four this season. We've got a couple more, one tonight. How exciting is this year in, year out? We're getting towards that time where we pick a winner. We're getting nervous, you right, know, right. because we've already seen so many great ones. we got some more that are still coming that we don't know yet. And uh, it, it's just a great time, you know, and also with the COVID, uh, you know, issues that are still out there yet lingering some, at least the students and of course their families and friends are getting to enjoy some of these events as well. I know I, I did, we were just talking off camera, a new office for the Yaler Law Firm. How exciting is that for you guys? Th that is a long time coming, uh, but we're really excited to be at the Tanger Center in Mount, uh, I'm sorry, in North Charleston. I should know where it is. It's my office, right? right. And you um, and will coming in there in the next month or so. So we'll be right there and a lot more convenient to a lot of folks. And you'll definitely see it if you're going on to 26. Beautiful. And they'll still be handing out checks to our scholar athletes each and every week. Each week, David Eller Law Offices and Riders Law Group proud to highlight scholar athletes from each participating school. The students selected have an opportunity to win a $2,500 scholarship at the end of the season. There's a caveat to that. You have to be a senior, so you're only going to see someone from James Island here because Beckham doesn't have any seniors. So we introduce you to Grace Harvey. Harvey, you see her GPA. It's a 484 as the GPA. Let me tell you some of her achievements on the track. Fifth fastest in school history in the 100 meter, fifth fastest in the 400 meter hurdles, ninth in the state in the 400 meter hurdles in 2021. Off the athletic field, she volunteers for the Low Country Food Bank, helping hands, environmental cleanups as well. She's also a student tutor, as she should be if she has a 484 I, GPA. Spread the love, we all right. need some tutoring. She can tutor me, and I don't know what she tutor me in, but I'll take it, hey. That's incredible, great for her. Halftime continues here from the backyard, 32-25 on QFS Transportation High School. If you missed the first half, you missed me say something a lot, that it was a game of runs, and that's exactly what it was. Darren Goldwater 
Natalie Spala. I'll add to that five threes hit by James Island. And Cam Smith had three of them. He had a game high 15 points in that opening half. We'll get a look at some of these first half highlights. It was James Island who had the first run of the game. Start with Braxton Scott. And I think that's really the biggest shock to me, or maybe not shock, but surprise, a pleasant surprise from this James Island team is their ability to shoot the three ball. We knew coming into this game they wanted to get deep in the paint. They wanted to, to pound it, but they've been shooting the ball extremely well from the outside, which is really what we expected for this Bengal team. But they're the ones right there. Rhode Ireland taking that one in. They've kind of been getting in the paint as well. So both of these teams getting away from what they, they traditionally know, what they traditionally love to stick with. And it's going to be at the end of the day of this game is really going to be who can maybe stick with that, maybe just adapt and kind of grow and figure out which which way to get it done, essentially. Who can establish some momentum. Yeah. Told you the 15 points for Cam Smith. That pace is James Island. Seven points for Ireland. Eight points for Thomas Oppold. That pace is the Bengals of Beckham through the first half as James Island shoots again for their ninth win in their last 10 games. The key for the Trojans here, seven and one in the region to win out to then get to that final game of the regular season against Buford. That could potentially be a game that decides the region. We'll take a timeout when we get back. It'll be time for the second half. 32-25 is the lead for the Trojans on QFS Transportation High School Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Two good friends, the head coaches, a rivalry trying to be born. And the second year of the program for the opposite bench for Lucy Beckham in the first year under the guidance of their head coach and the alumnus of this program, Brady Shuck. Here's Braxton Scott on the strong take, boarded away by Harper Stevens, and he got fouled. He had John Grant climbing his back. The legend of the Wando James Island rivalry goes way, way back. And nothing about Beckham coming in can stem that rivalry at all. But it'd be good for everyone involved if another <laughs> rivalry can be born. And both coaches have talked about that. I don't think anyone said, eh, there's too many rivalries. It's a good point. We love a good rivalry. We've got a five second violation here. The pressure defense from Pure Ankrum. Just That's look at college football. I feel like go. we have branded rivalry Saturdays like three or four right. times throughout the season. Hey, we'll take it. Braxton Scott with a ball fake and slid his foot in the process. He's scratching his head after that one. But here these Trojans are applying this pressure now with full court. Wonder if there's more of a back and forth to this game. There was a 7-0 run for James Island in the first quarter. The teams exchanged 8-0 runs to open the second quarter. There was a 10-0 run for James Island towards the end of the second quarter. Only stemmed by a late three. And we have a little bit of commotion in the stands.
appreciate the crew giving us a heads up. There is, in his words, some confusion going on. And there are some local officers that are involved. I will tell you, this place has been very lively through the half. There was, <laughs> Natalie called it a cheer off. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. What took place at halftime when we were, we were in the break. No shortage of flips from both the Lucy Beckham cheer squad and the, the James Island cheer squad over here. So hats off to all these ladies, of course, coming to support their teams and, and these students here. We're seeing no shortage of students, but now we are seeing it looks like the Lucy Beckham student section being escorted out. That is a large contingent of students that are being either escorted out or upstairs. Upstairs is the answer. Oh, okay, if you there can we go. Up, you can see the line from the bottom. They're going out the door and up high. There you go. They're coming <laughs> in. So they'll get them off the court. And, and maybe one of the reasons they are two feet, three feet right. from the James Island bench and the scorers table where they were. And it's been pretty raucous. Yeah, it's been loud over here, for, for lack of a better word, I guess. For that to happen, enough was done. Yes. Safe assumption. Best we can tell, there were no arrests made, nothing along those lines. This seems to be a preventative measure right. to separate the student body from the proximity to the James Island bench. And you can see the wry smile there from Brady <laughs> Shuck. Now, James Island, CCSD didn't have school today, but James Island, they did have a pep rally in light of this game. And that is Braxton Scott with the teardrop. Yeah, Charleston County didn't have school today. It was another one of those teacher work days or e-learning days. On the inside, there's Allard for the quick answer. But regardless of what just happened, I think we've been guaranteed a lively atmosphere <laughs> for the last 14 minutes and change of this game. And we've, talking of, we've talked about this budding rivalry all night, but maybe it's solidified by the amount of people showing up, the amount of students showing up for this one. It'll be interesting to see if it affects how the game is called. To this point, not yet. Timeout for James Island. Brady Shuck didn't like the flow of that offensive set. And honestly, this isn't an awful timeout for either side. It comes from the James Island bench, but with the commotion that's happened, it's not a bad time to no. settle down both of these teams and get everyone focused again on what matters, and that's that's right here on the floor. Exactly. There is a lot going on in this gym tonight. Both sides have a significant amount of people cheering for them. Of course, we just witnessed that, that group of students be escorted to the top of the row, so a lot going on here. But, and again, we've seen runs from both sides of these these teams so when we when time starts to become a factor in this game you're going to want to be on the not the receiving end of that run you're going to want to make sure you're the one putting points on the board atmospheres like this that is a dangerous pass that he wasn't expecting and they're bailed out on the foul there from noah bales knocked down noah bail out bales <laughs> i was gonna say i see what you did there thank you I like that. Although, he'd prefer not to bail him out with a foul. Atmospheres like this, though, it, it ramps things up. Certain guys are made for atmospheres like this. How about the lob underneath? Cameron Nell's first two. Allard picked up by Grant in transition. Beckham not afraid to come right back at James Island after makes. We've seen that now a couple of times. Not at all. And, and Really, the key guy in a quick response is that guy, Malin Allard. He pushes that ball, pushes that tempo. Speaking of pushing the tempo, here comes Cameron Smith. That one knocked off the floor by Allard. Ireland caught in the air. He's got Harper Stevens in the post, working up on John Grant, and it's a tie-up. It's a tie-up that favors the Bengals, so we'll stay on this end of the floor. Yeah, let's take a look at this dunk. Just, I mean, impressive to say the least. He caught his defender watching and everyone in the gym got to watch a, a, a special play right there as a result. 
Allard into the chest of Nell. The defense sank in. That opened up Oppold. And it's last touched underneath by Gibbs. And Apples, we've seen him connect on, on one shot from the corner. But I could say they all look like they're going in. He's got a, a, a beautiful shot. He just hasn't found that, that basket so far tonight. Largest lead was 10. That was after 10 straight points for the Trojans in the second quarter. Inside, it won't fall for Harper Stevens. Fourteen and seven on the year of the Trojans, seven and one in the region. That is last touch by the Bengals. By the reaction of DJ Wright, it looked like he felt it may have been last touch by him. <laughs> they think they got away with one right there. Freshman Wright, the most used freshman for the Trojans on the inside. Harper Stevens starts for the Bengals. Spacing not ideal on either side there on this possession, but it does give a clean look up top and a foul underneath. That'll be John Grant. You know, they didn't get the foul. They had basket interference with it hitting one of these support wires. And this is a sneaky nine point lead for this James Island team. Both the Trojans and the Bengals have been back and forth all night. But I do believe this is the biggest deficit we've seen. Off the floor, Allard keeps it alive. He's the only one who went down to the deck and he earned the possession. On the baseline, the extra pass deflected out of bounds. And it stays with the Bengals. Yeah, Allard is not afraid to sacrifice his body for the, for the good of the team. He is usually the first one getting in there, getting down, getting dirty. Here he is again, taking advantage of the closeout and beating him to the rim. That's a great crossover. Saw some space on the left side, but last minute swapped to the right, laid it in. Active hands there from Allard. That's a tie up. It stays with the Trojans with 4.23 to go in the third. I'm going to take back what I said before about rivalries needing teams to, to win both ways because just the general feel and the vibe in this arena. Oh, it, yeah. It tells you this is already a rivalry. I mean, I can attest to that as being from Michigan, being a Michigan fan. There has been quite a few games where Ohio State has gotten the better <laughs> of my Wolverines, but, but this year not the case. Hey, but you kept your coach. <laughs> that is true. Mack is called for the foul. A Will Lou Gray Opportunity School free throw. Rich tradition of individualized learning here for DJ Wright. Still scoreless on the game for Wright. But he's had his hand in on a couple of different plays on both ends of the floor. The talent is undeniable. One of the few freshmen on this team for a team that has no shortage of, of upperclassmen. Eight seniors. And then he finds the, finds the scoreboard. Feels as though Beckham is more willing to play at a higher tempo in the second half than they were in the first. That foul will go against Cam Smith. And that'll be the fourth on James Island, halfway through the third quarter. And the first on Smith. Smith's yet to score in this second half. He had 15 in the first. And even though the points are what highlighted his play in the opening half, his defense is probably what highlights his play to opposing coaches. He knocks that one out of bounds. It stays with the Bengals. And we have a timeout on the floor. We'll go deeper into that and the defensive prowess of the senior Cameron Smith when we bring you back here to the backyard. A raucous backyard on QFS Transportation. High school hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet.
Both coaches expected a pretty good environment here tonight. We certainly have that. Eight-point lead for James Island. They opened up a 10-point advantage towards the end of that second quarter. And it's been a more physical, back-and-forth type of game in the first few minutes of the third quarter. That's where the Bengals students are now. They were down closer to the court until early on in the third quarter. They were told by the authorities that they needed to move upstairs. Ireland secures it on the inbounds, guarded closely there by Cam Smith. When Cam Smith is the primary on-ball defender, uh, opponents are hitting about one out of every six shots. It's one of the better marks you can find in the state. So while he's put up big numbers offensively tonight, maybe his most impactful play is yet to come, and it could be on this end of the floor for James Island. And that's been the case here in the, the back half of this game. And you, you hear time and time again that your shot's not working. Make something happen on the defensive side of the ball. Nice first step there for Allard. Couldn't spin that through with the English. And is it a jump ball? It is, and the tie-up favors the Bengals. So that's now the third we've had in this third quarter. And I got to give both sides credit. Both of them are going at that ball. Glover had said that rebounding has been a point of emphasis lately. Well drawn up play, Allard finishes. He's got eight. It was a four point game when they met Wednesday night in Mount Pleasant at the Bengals new place. Deep three for Braxton Scott. Give him 12 on the night. And he is all smiles after that one. I do not blame him. Nothing but net for there, but here comes Allard. Sixth three of the night for James Island. That's almost half their points for all of us math majors. Here comes the freshman right. It's slapped out of his hands by Allard making the play on the defensive end. And that is just something he is so good at. You don't see that very often from a player. Getting in there on the action. But here, let's get a look at this action from Braxton Scott, the sophomore. The guy with the unteachable feel for the game, but he's feeling himself now. John Grant gets it out of traffic at the free throw line. Hard screen at the top. That was set by Grant Lauer. One of the first possessions he's in for. Now Lauer shuffles one and it's a turnover. Bengals back the other way. Here comes Allard avoiding contact. Ball loose. And saved back in by C.J. Gibbs. How about Allard? He's everywhere, including running over defenders. That's an offensive foul. And we've reached that point of the game where the depth of these two teams is going to start playing a role. Glover only plays six, seven guys on his bench. Not really the case over there on James Island, who can swap guys in and out, give guys a break when they need it. And again, both of these teams, this is their third game they've played this week, so, so they've been busy. <laughs> Allard takes the seat. You say give him breaks when they need it. He needs it. He's been flying around. A foul on the three. Coakley was into Braxton Scott. So was Jonah Mack. They could easily go on either one of them. And they give it to Coakley. Chance to match the largest lead of the night, and that chance is given to Braxton Scott. Three, Will Lou Gray Opportunity School free throws. A rich tradition of individualized learning. Scott now has 13, and they've matched the largest lead of the night at 10. He had 18 in Wednesday's win at Beckham. Beckham will take a 30 second timeout. This is part of the game as well where it could behoove both, maybe even more so Beckham to settle things down a little bit. If you get into that physical up and down style with a bigger and deeper James Island team, that can only serve to wear the guys down just a little bit. 100%, so, so you like a timeout like this kind of 
And again, this is a game that motions are are out there. It's a TV game. These kids know that it is no secret. So going into this one, both teams were going to be amped up. But we've reached that point of the game, like I had mentioned, where you start to feel fatigued, especially after three games this week. And it, this is where really that depth on James Island is going to start to expose the lack of depth on the Bengals team. Another free throw coming for Braxton Scott. Older brother was a point guard here at James Island. And Brady Shuck told me that he's in the gym all the time, getting shots up. Him and our Montre Scott, too. He said, how does that work? If a high schooler just wants to get into the gym, he said, I make sure that I open the gym if anybody wants to shoot. It's not like there's a ton of options around right. if guys want to get shots up. So that's another, another reason for the success of James Island. They were an eight-win team last year and gunning for a region title this year. That will stay with Becker, no, James Island. And if anyone was wondering, Braxton Scott and Amantre Scott, they're not related. Nope. That was perhaps the first question I asked <laughs> Brady Shuck when we were going over his, his team. He says, well, maybe somewhere down the line, but not first cousins, not brothers. That's all we know. DJ Wright garnering a lot of playing time. Coming our way, a timeout tried. No, not going to be granted. Oppold is on the sideline in front of us as he secured the ball and called timeout. So it's a turnover. And this is a kid who's played hard all night. The pioneer of their program. His shot's not exactly where he'd like it to be tonight. I believe he's, he's one for three, one for four from, from deep. Gibbs with a nice find down low. John Grant finishes with contact. Another great find from the Trojans. And hey, three defenders step up. That's, I mean, what a better opportunity to dish it down low to the biggest guy on the floor right now. And he's headed to the free throw line to put an exclamation mark on that play. He could be one of the more physical players on the floor in a lot of these at least lower state games from what we've seen. Heck, he's a tight end committed to go play at Coastal. He looks like a tight end that's committed to go play at Coastal. He does <laughs> look like a Division I tight end. I think they got DJ Wright with a foul. James Island has outscored Beckham 13-6 in this third quarter. And remember, that's on the heels of a 10-3 run to close the second quarter. So from about the two-minute mark in the second quarter to this point, James Island has been the aggressor. They have been the one dictating the play in this game. That'll help for the Bengals. A much needed bucket. They will gladly take that one. A strong move. They. I don't know who that was under the basket. He really wanted that charge. It looked like he was in the right spot, perhaps a second too late. But it's just a strong play by Jonah Mack. A play that these Bengals desperately needed with 125 left in the third. CJ Gibbs was leaning just enough. So the junior Jonah Mack, who hails from Boston, He's got rain in the low country tonight. He does not have a couple of feet of snow. I'm not sure if this, the <laughs> feet of snow are still on the ground in Boston, but I know they've gotten pounded up in the Northeast we'll for have to a call couple our, of weekends our Scott in a row. Eisberg, who's up there. Up Is there Eisberg the up there now? I believe so. We can go with Dave Williams. He can give us a, <laughs> a weather report. Perhaps Dave is the more uh, legitimate option. No disrespect <laughs> to Scott. Well, if Scott's there, he can be the boots on the ground. There you go. Perfect. We've got our bases covered then. Here's Cam Smith. Got to reset those feet. He was sliding when he received the pass. First three points of the second half for Cam Smith. He has 18 for the game. I had a feeling we weren't done seeing him tonight. Braxton Scott, Cameron Smith, two more for him. It'll be Bengals ball. about this, this kind of shift in momentum all night between these two teams, both of them finding runs. 
both of them having answers to the other team's runs, but perhaps this is the, the biggest and most aggressive run we're seeing from this Trojan team. I bet if you ask Brady Shuck after this game, one of the biggest differences between this game and Wednesday night's game, the fresh legs. 100%. Because I didn't see Wednesday's game, but I can tell you these legs don't look tired. Right, and I did see Wednesday's game, and I can tell you from the lack of three-point production from this Trojans team on Wednesday, or Thursday, what was, yep, it, it was, was Wednesday. Wednesday. My days are all messed up, but fresh is a word I would, I would use to describe this Trojans team. Along with Natalie Spall, I'm Darren Goldwater. Here, that's Braxton Scott. And Scott has 17. Braxton Scott has 17. Cameron Smith has 20. The two of them are outscoring the Bengals. Now Allard is back into the game. They need his production on both ends of the floor. Inside, ripped off the ground is Jonah Mack, who doesn't have the finish. And that's how the third quarter ends. A dominant third quarter for the Trojans of James Island. They outscore Beckham 20 to eight in the third quarter and have a 19 point lead heading to the fourth. You're watching QFS Transportation High School Hoops Driven by Cruz Chevrolet. as an assistant before getting the head job for Brady Shuck. And he said he's grown up with a lot of these guys from their time at JV, not growing up as, you know, into adulthood, but growing up with this team. And that's another one of the reasons why this Trojan team has been so accepting of him getting the head job, why they've been able to take the positive steps forward. Because it's not just like a guy has come in, granted it's to his right. alma mater, they've been together. For the last three years, a lot of them were together on JV, now rising up to the varsity ranks. And in some capacity, the same can be said over for the Bengals. Speaking with head coach Andrew Glover, he says it's just a brotherhood. They look at me like, like I'm their brother. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing when you're, you're trying to be serious and get things done. But, <laughs> but just the chemistry this team has had in such a short time of being together. Is, is another thing to note about the Lucy Beckham Bengals. Yeah, I'll certainly get more into the brotherhood side of things as this game works its way along. Beckham with a chance to run, and no surprise, it's Nalen Allard out in front. That one's turned away. Nice recovery there by Nell, who's now got it on this end, traveling in the post. And it looked, that looked like an easy two for Nalen Allard. But then here comes was Cam Cameron Smith. Smith, the guy we've been talking about all night, and he says not today as he picks up a foul right here. He thought he had another clean pick. 20 points for Smith, who just committed that foul. 17 for Braxton Scott, the leading scores for the Bengals. I had eight for Oppold. 
and for Allard, and seven for Ireland. In a game that has been physical, the first half with a game of runs, the third quarter was a full-on run for James Island. Beckham gets one back. And we are welcoming Tyson Smith to the floor for the first time. Sophomore guard. One of the reasons he's on the floor, he can shoot it. He is a three-point specialist. And we've got a full timeout. With 6.45 to go here in the third. So explain what we saw at the half when, when we saw this <laughs> cheer off. I can tell you I saw, I don't know, flips and splits, but we had two different sides, right? Darren, clearly you've never seen any of the Bring It On movies. That's all That's all I can say it's to that. It's a bit outside the spectrum, Just I think. a typical cheer off. I mean, you love to see it. Obviously, we've got the Lucy, um, or no, rather the James Island Trojans here defending their home court. So, I mean, this is their court. They want to cheer on it. But we've got a whole squad of Bengals over there who, who showed up, and they're making their presence known just as much. They've been loud over there all night. So James Island came. They did a little floor routine. It looked great. I kind of want to be an honorary member of their team now. I hope they will accept me. But then there come the Bengals. They they got on the court as well and, and did a little performance of their own. So it was a cool little back and forth, back and forth action over there from, from the ladies. I know the fans liked it. I Heck enjoyed yeah. it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Beckham comes out pressuring the ball significantly more than they have. Makes sense. They need to make something happen. They're down by 17 points with six and a half minutes to play. Tyson Smith forcing the ball out towards midcourt as C.J. Gibbs navigates his way into the lane and shorts the floater. But it comes right down to another Trojan. Cameron Nell curls it through. Now in transition, that's knocked out of Bale's hands and coming back to the Trojans. Grant takes a breather, so does Cameron Nell. Coakley gets his hand on one. Coakley nearly secured it. Instead, Bale does and finds Oppel down there all alone. Now these Bengals, they will continue to play hard, and that's a big reason why Malachi Coakley is on the floor tonight and right now. There's Coakley again. It was Oppold who forced that turnover. And Coakley who spun off of is that Ankrum. It's Ankrum down there. They're going to get Ankrum with the foul. It's a break for the Bengals right here. That was deemed a shooting foul with Coakley spinning into the chest of Ankrum. An active hands by, by Thomas Oppel there. The 6-3 guard slash forward. He's been active here on the defensive side. Most nights he's a, he's a huge offensive threat for these guys. But sometimes, hey, it, if you're not making things work on the offense, make them work on the defense. And this is exactly what he's done. But he is their leading scorer, isn't he, tonight? Eight points from him. Oppold's got 12 now. Oh, there you go. So, yep. so forgive me. He has been very active on both sides of the ball. Couple of free throws there for Coakley. Here's Braxton Scott. He got fouled from behind. Are they going to count it? Yes, they will. They'll count the bucket with a push from behind as well. Nineteen points now for Braxton Scott. We could have two different Trojans at 20, and that's what we have with the Will Lou Gray free throw. It's going to be hard to pick our, our player of the game, but but Braxton Scott is making a huge case for him himself. If you're playing high school ball and you've got a couple of guys put up 20 on one night, it will be tough to beat that team. Little bounce off the floor and off the window for Jonah Mack. And the Trojans win it while his Pettis does. 
Little floater for Smith. And knocked out of bounds by Armantre Scott. Beckham doing its best to keep some fresh legs yeah. out there, match the rotation. I'm not sure how how well people can, can see this at home, but just being on court side, we can see the, the fatigue that's really kind of taken over the bodies of these Bengal players. They look tired, and hey, you can't necessarily blame them. They're out here working. It's been an up-tempo, and more than that, a very physical game. Mack doesn't have the finish on the inside, but he will on the second attempt. Mack has seven. That could limit the depth a little bit for Beckham as well, the physicality of this game. That one blocked by Bales. I mean, it's a big, deep roster for the Bengals, but there aren't many guys who can match up physically with right. what we're seeing on the floor from the Trojans. But this team will grow. The school will grow. They don't have a senior class yet at the school. And I know we touched on it a little tonight, but this was a team that was 1-11 last year. To have such a successful season, I believe 14-6, and 14-7, and and something like that, but a winning season. Which they should have when all is said and done. That is what it looks like for the Bengals. And that speaks to the job that Andrew Glover has done. It speaks to the commitment of his team. And it says a lot about the future of the Bengals. And then again, speaks to that, that brotherhood, that these guys are willing to, to go out w with each other every single night, sacrifice their time, blood, sweat, and tears. Oakley cleans up the Scott Miss. Allard, Bales, I was going to leave that for you. <laughs> Knocked down Noah, ready. almost had it. I was ready to pull the trigger on that one. Bengals keep with three and a half to play. Fifty-seven forty-one with three and a half to play at James Island. You're watching QFS Transportation High School Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Sixteen-point win for lead for James Island with three and a half to play. I was talking with Andrew Glover earlier today, and he said he got an encouraging text after Wednesday's loss, a four-point loss. It's a tough loss, and the text was, "You know what? Last year that was about a fifty-point loss." And that that speaks to the family that that he has around him, friends and family. We've been talking a lot about the brotherhood, and that's Sam DeLongshaw, and that speaks to the brotherhood of this team. That's the younger brother of one of Glover's best friends in Jack DeLongshaw. They were teammates at Wando. Jack now does a lot of the PA announcing for the home games. I think he's considered the voice of the Bengals. And Sam is a remarkable story. 
And as a family friend, it's been fun to watch him grow and to the young man that he's become. Maybe he'll see some time on the floor here tonight, certainly as we move forward throughout the season. But it speaks to the brotherhood of what this Beckham Bengals team is and what the community's been all about. Here's Rowan Ireland. And now on the baseline, Bales couldn't get that one up over the rim, but high above the rim to keep that thing in play. It was knocked down by Nell, back to the Bengals. And that roll falls through. Ireland gets it. Cam Smith underneath. It'll be tough. Cam Smith, Braxton Scott. I might lean Smith. Kind of set the tempo in the first half. Underneath, Coakley hangs in the air. The follow's not there. And Natalie, it feels like this 14-point deficit with the style of play right now, it might be a little bit much here for the Bengals down the stretch just because of the depth we've talked about for the Trojans. Right. But definitely kind of the, the tale of two, two stories when you look at this game in its entirety. A massive dominating third quarter from James Island after we saw two quarters in that first half. Really, it was anyone's game. We saw both teams have some momentum, have some runs, and then the opposing team really have answers to those runs. So it was a, an amazing, and here's, here's a. They got an offensive foul. Oppel didn't think so. He thought he was getting set for an and one. Instead, they'll take two points away from him that he thought were in his back pocket. And that's Allard. Yep. The refs got that one right. Ooh. Playing ping pong down there. It yes, comes away so. in the Trojans' hands. And a foul around midcourt. Oppel will be whistled for his third. And I got to give it to both of these teams. I mean, still playing hard. You'd imagine this one's going to fall into the hands of, of James Island, but so much to be thankful for that both of these teams, they came out, they competed. They're competing with two minutes left in this game still. And there's a lot to take away from, from this loss if you're, if you're the Bengals. I mean, really, the season in general. Right. Glover said, patience. I said, well, what'd you learn last year? And he chuckled. He said, patience. He said, it's something he's never been through. He's never really had a losing season in his basketball career. He had one when he was at USC Aiken. And he said it was a six, and I think he said 20 teams, six wins, 20 losses. He said, but it didn't feel like that yeah. because they knocked off the top team in their league <laughs> twice in that year and felt like because of that, they always had a chance as they worked their way through the season. Last year, wasn't that way, and that's why he regards Oppel so highly, Ireland so highly. The guys that went through the fire last year suffered through that. Right. And their roles have changed this year as the team has improved.